Welcome to Nerd Escape, the comic book podcast where we talk about everything underrated and overlooked. I'm your host, Jablar. And I'm your host, Cammie. Welcome back. Hi, babes. Hey. Hi. Did you miss us somewhat? No? Yay, nay? Possibly. Uh, well, we can't really hear you right now. Yeah. But we are going to get into a Bonanza episode. Uh-huh. So I guess that's what I just made Something up that right we've now. never done before. Yeah, never done. Um, but before that, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Heck ding, yes, please. You know. He's just pointing everywhere. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to make pop animations. He has no clue where the bell button is. <laughs> wow. It's not there. Uh, but if you're listening on Spotify, please give us a rating and a follow. If you're listening on iTunes, please give us a rating and a follow. Yeah. Or a comment. Say, hey, you look silly. Or, hey, Camille, you really sound nasally. Fix it. And I'd be like, well, pay for a surgeon. Thank Can't you. Be fixed. Can't be fixed. But the reason I say it's Bonanza episode, we did come back from Maine. And when we went to Maine, we couldn't help ourselves. We went to a comic book store yes. and had fun and bought a bunch of comics. Stores. Shout out, let me get, make sure I get this right, yes. to Coastal City Comics in Portland, Maine. Yep. Um, the guy working there and runs the IG is Tristan Gallagher. He was so nice. Sweetheart. And honestly, the coolest Swamp Thing shirt I've ever seen in my oh, life. Yeah, it was really I'm going to cool. roll it because it's my own photo. It's real life. It's not copyrights. <laughs> Yikes. Um, <laughs> we talked a lot about copyrights with Tristan because I had like a, a Sean Murphy uh, Tokyo Ghost shirt on. Oh, and he yeah. was like, oh, I had better shirts. But then they came and seized and assisted me. <laughs> <laughs> but Tristan Gallagher, Co- Coastal City Comics, super nice. So nice. Um, you know, we kicked it about comic books. Uh, it's always good when you can like kick it with the comic book guy. Oh, yeah. The local town. He was like, all right, y'all are cool. I showed him my Swamp Thing tattoo. And we we're best friends. They were best friends. <laughs> uh, but we are going to discuss. And it, uh, the shout out to Coastal City Comics. Go to their website. Follow them on IG. Mm-hmm. 634 Congress Street, Portland, Maine. Beautiful comic book store. It was awesome. Yeah. We'll, we'll roll some little clips here. Look at us in the comic book store. Looks pretty cool, right? <laughs> this is the part where it's rolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was fun. Maine was fun. It really was. I loved it. Every single moment. She loved every single moment at where... I'm like, hey, what are you doing up at night on your cell phone? Looking at houses. Like, there's 23 acres for $100,000. I'm like, where? Portland, Maine. I'm like, all right. We can't tell people this. Why? They'll start moving there. Yeah, don't move there. It it sucked. It's cold. We sucked, but we had It was really cold. Like, it wasn't really cold, but it, I mean, it was in the mid 40s, like, almost all week, and it was wet. So. And it it was April, late April. Yeah. Um, So, what I'm hearing, the winters are terrible. But the reason inlanders don't move there is because the snow is bad. Yeah. So we'll see what life takes us. We might be tolerating that one day. And, Maybe. But the the air was more crisp. Oh, I'll so say crisp. that thing at Portland, Maine. The water tasted better. So much better. The beer tasted the better, The beer too. tasted better. And I, I talked to someone there like, you were on vacation. Your mind was in different spots. Like, no, I've tasted a lot of beer yeah. in Austin, Texas, and Houston, and Dallas, anywhere in Texas. Most of it's so, so big. Yeah. Um, but we... We're in Boston, and then we flew, we drove up there, which is not a bad drive at all. It was a beautiful drive. Yeah. But when we stopped there, we stopped in New Hampshire. Yeah, it was and really we nice. we also ran into a very delicious brewery here. It's called and Earth so Eagle. This Bonanza episode, we went to Earth Eagle. And, and we brought back some beer. We brought back some beer. Yes. And I, you know, me, the beer gal, and it's, like, these cans are legit super cool. Yeah. It's... I, we yeah. bought merch and then we left there, you know, spending good tourist money on some yeah. brewery merch. Um, so this is a double IPA. It is 8.5% alcohol per volume. And I don't think I tried this when we were there. Shout out to Earth Eagle Brewing. Call yes. them on IG as Please. well. Give them a like. And if you're in New Hampshire, Portsmouth. 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 It, we, it was a little gym. It was like in the corner of like the little like little harbor street. Yeah. And super tiny. I was just like, let's just walk over here. And it was just like, picked a good spot. It, it was, was cool. Good. People were cool right there. But here's a little so little was it ASMR. We've got our wifey and hubby cu- cups glasses. Thank you to my best, best, best friend, Alyssa. She got these for me. You ready for this? Man, I was supposed to crack it open. I wanted to do it. You whore. Stop. <laughs> I knew she was going to be mad that I did that. Here, I'll pour you a drink first. Yeah, I don't think you know how to pour. She's right. I mean, she went. She took a little technical thing. If you didn't know, follow Cammy on Bruising Books. She needs to make a little more extra content than she's putting forth. I do. Some, uh, a little more effort on Nerd Escape, which we appreciate. But uh, she likes 
Cammy's a bigger brew head than I am. She brews her own beer. Yeah. In the future, look out. There might yeah. be a mom and pa shop brewery. Yeah. Which is really cool. I'll be rebranding my um, YouTube ta- channel, so keep your eyes peeled out for that. Um, but we are here sure. to talk to y'all and show y'all the stuff we bought. Mm-hmm. I'm going to set this here. Besides beer, because she is like, don't worry, I'm a carry on girl. I'll get this on. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, God. It's so good. That's good. And it's just so fresh. That's a double IPA, 8.5%. And that, it's kind of. It's good. Kind of has like a hazy IPA. Like it is a hazy. It. Okay. Because double I so double IPAs and your hazy IPA is, it just means that there's more hops in it. So um, more hops than normal. Okay. It, so double IPA, double the hops. And your hazy IPAs, they use specific um hops and specific yeast that makes it cloudy and okay. give off a specific taste so yes yeah she, she, she always has like the palate descriptions and i taste the beer i can't i'm always just like it's earthy <laughs> like i don't know it's like all i can think of it's like it uh, tastes like earth. and if it's bad i'm just like lackluster pretty much what's, i don't know <laughs> what's so funny is i recall a time i was with my mom and we had gotten some beets and we were telling like the cashier we were like yeah we juice beets and stuff like that and the girl was just like i've always wanted to try beets like how do they taste and the only response to that could say was they taste like dirt <laughs> and i wasn't meaning it in a bad way i meant to say earthy and my mom like looked and scowled it at me because my mom is an english teacher so she's like you could have chosen a better word i was like i didn't know one at the time yeah I but i just i wouldn't take your advice <laughs> like it's, it's like it's, dirt i'm like okay i've been making good life decisions and i was now. like <laughs> and i think i told her i was like not dirt in a bad way and that's like well dirt is dirt yeah. so but you know sometimes when you drink beer predominantly it's all aroma when you eat stuff it's all aroma so like yeah there's some flavor but again predominantly it's what you're smelling so when you smell dirt you can kind of taste it so you know clean dirt (laughs) smells a different way than dirty dirt you know yeah this she's gonna be making the best beer in the world people she knows the different kinds of dirt dirty dirt dirt (laughs) dirt dirt i might use some dirt in my (laughs) brews moving on (laughs) This is the Bonanza episode because we're going to, we never done this before, we're going to tell you everything we bought in Maine mm-hmm. from the comic book store and from the local b- bookstore. Why did we put more weight on our bags coming back and pay, you know, extra for our check-in? I don't know. Um, we didn't pay we did. extra. Well, make the people, whatever, whatever. We brought a lot of books back. Don't lie to the people. So I'll start off with the first one because I'm I'm uh, at the comic book store. I haven't watched this anime all the way through. It's a classic. I um, have. She has, and I've heard, I think actually this a good friend of mine named Nate, a comedian, I did his podcast. He actually described to me on the podcast the whole, like, like I was like, go ahead and spoil it for me. And it gets pretty dark from what I hear. Like, there's like oh, yeah. war involved and there's like, it's crazy, like, like, I don't care. I mean, I forgot what he said, but it was like human trafficking involved where they're like trying to stop it or something like that. Yeah, yeah there's some there of that is. going. Oh I think God. there is. But, but it's okay. I'm not going to tell you anything. Full Metal Alchemist. Yikes. Um, <laughs> yes, if you've seen the anime, this is actually, I saw this, it's the one, two, three uh, volumes. Actually, I didn't get this at the Coastal City Comics. I forgot the bookstore we, we went to. I forgot too, but we went to a bookstore. It was very, very nice. We'll bookstore. find it. Yeah, we'll find it. Um, but yes, yeah, Full Metal Alchemist by Hiromu or Arikawa. Arikawa. Um, in which I've learned from a friend that that's an alias for the artist. And the artist was like one of the first female manga artists back in the day. Uh, you know, I didn't really do too much history looking up for this episode, but I've just, I'm assuming this came out what, in the 90s. That's, or no, I that came it, out 2000s. 2000s, yeah. So it's a classic, well, you know, early 2000s manga. That's good. But, and then I'll just read the back of it if you've never heard of it. Um, alchemy, the mystical power to alter the natural world somewhere between magic, art, and science. When two brothers, Edward and Alphonse uh, Elric, mm-hmm. dabble in these powers to grant their dearest wish, one of them lost an arm and a leg, and the other became nothing but a soul locked into a body of a living iron. And iron is like a, it's a body of armor, like this big body of armor. Now they are agents of the government, slaves of the military alch- alch- alchemical complex, using their unique powers to obey their order, even to kill. Are we killing people here? Okay, but their powers aren't unique. 
the world crawls with evil alchemists and in the purest of the ultimate alchemy tre treasure, the Philosopher's Stone, their enemies are even more ruthless than they are. So I love science. I love history of alchemy. Uh, I'm a chemist. I trade myself, <laughs> something of a scientist myself. Um, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. Like we'll, we'll roll some little, little clips here, but uh, from what I saw from the, I watched the first chapter of that anime, but I never got really deep into it. Okay. Um, yeah, it's two brothers, and then there's a body of armor just walking around. So if you like knock off this armor's head, you can get someone in it. It's not. The whole armor has a soul in it. And they were trying to bring someone back from the dead, I believe. That's what happened, correct? Yes. And everything went bad, and Edward lost his arm and his leg. So he has like a metal arm and leg, and he's the state alchemist. And he goes around stopping all these evil alchemists, is what I'm assuming. I haven't watched it yet. So I'm excited to dig into this new story. But that was a pretty cool find. Cammy, you go down the Are line. Are we doing here. Conga line. Does it matter which. Do whatever you want. Okay, well, I'm going to just Ooh, do this big boy. Good. Okay, as many of you know, because I've talked about it on my my personal YouTube channel, my booktube channel, and I think I've talked. I've absolutely talked about it on this channel. But I saw this pretty little thing and I had to swoop it up. <laughs> Freaking Skyward. Like, Skyward. I have all the volumes. But I had to get the big volume because, again, I'm a slut for Skyward. <laughs> oh um, I wish Joe Henderson Joe would. Henderson, the slut for you, man. Um, I wish. And I've told him this hey, on Twitter. Whoa. I've told him it on Twitter. I was like, I really wish that Skyward was still going on. Like, I love it so much. And he was just like, I'm so glad that you liked it. I'm like, a famous person talked to me. It was Joe. Um, but Skyward <laughs> is so good. Again, please go freaking listen to the episode i don't know which episode it yeah. is but we talk about it In it's depth. so good basically there's no gravity on earth anymore we're in the future and we have a girl who is trying to basically save the future of the city um so yeah please go read it oh, i yeah. beg of ye. and yes speaking of the coastal city comics i also want to mention rad wrath Oh, yeah. uh, it is a comic book by Tristan Gallagher, um, the I assume the owner of Coastal City Comics, correct? I don't know. He has to be the owner. He Maybe. works there. He runs the IG. I think I'm pretty sure it's his shop. He, it's not. He's the comic book guy of that place. Yeah, he's but, the guy. Yeah, Christian and then uh, Christian, it's Tristan and Christian, Christian Debar <laughs> illustrates it. Um, and it, it, we'll roll some screens of it, but it looks like just like a metal zombie skateboard. It's kind of cool. Yeah, thing. He was just like, yeah, here. When we were leaving, we got pretty cool with them that he just gave it to us he, very happily he's like here you go i'll give rock y'all with this um but yeah it's always fun to see independent comics and i'll get, we'll i wonder if we can it. get it here in at austin city austin Maybe. books and comics but red Rath, i always say austin city like i said coastal city comics followed them and i'll just run through real quick all the volumes i got uh he got a lot i did i got a lot um i'll start off with the ones i already finished because i just rolled through these profit remission it is a classic. I've seen this around for a while, ever since I re started reading comic books. And I think I've read the first one before, but I kind of wanted to start my own collection. Um, but stories by Brandon Graham uh, with Simon Roy, Farrell Deferl, Farrell Dalrymple, Giannis Milagiannis. <laughs> and so they have different artists. Nice. They have different writers and different artists. Um, but it's just a sci fi like wonder. It's just, it's. It's really weird. So it's just on a, dis on a distant future Earth, um, on distant future Earth, changed by time and alien influence, John Prophet awakes from cryo sleep. His mission is to climb the towers of Dalu Vaughn and awaken the Earth Empire. So when he goes and awakens the Earth Empire, it's just this guy in a spacesuit and he's fighting like mutant wolves and everything. Like the it's distant future, and, like everything's like you know predators now, and they want to kill him. He awakens it, and then all across the universe different clones of him wake up and then so the sci-fi book can pick up wherever it wants to so it's, okay. like, it's like a version of him with a tail there's like a version of him like as okay. like a, as like a bubble robot okay and so, that's when all the artists come into play yes exactly that's cool. and so and i know you kind of you love like a oh i love when, anthologies when, when, when it, anthology and then when stuff like changes up oh like, yeah 100%. you love short stories and it's like yeah throw in a different artist throw in a different writer and they kind of blend and work off each other you know yeah um so yeah, that's gonna be a fun one to review. Wayward, um, just to be quick and honest. Roy Lane, which you'll see right here. Um, pretty cool cover. I like that's what attracted me to this, the cover. It's a girl with uh 
like she has spikes at the end of like sticks and she's holding them she looks evil and there's a bunch of cats like kind of in a, or staring at you through the whole comic and Roy Lane is trying to start a new life um, I actually already read this she's half Japanese and half Irish cool and so she left her dad because um, she she wanted to go live in Japan with her mom um, and she, she knows Japanese it's like it kind of shows that little like you know the little brackets and says translated from Japanese yeah but Orlane is trying to start a new life when she reunites with her mother in Japan. But ancient creatures lurking in the shadows of Tokyo sense something hidden deep within her, threatening everything she holds dear. She can unlock the secrets of her power before it's, if it's too before it, can she can she unlock the secrets of her power before it's too late? That and sounds so really good. There's like Goomba like uh like turtle warriors coming after her, uh-huh. but it's like based on like real folklore Japanese, Japanese stories. Folklore, yeah. folk, folk, folk. Lord, and even the guy who reviewed it, who is the producer, uh-huh. like he helped produce the comic book. Um, uh, it's an uh, image comics. He wanted to hit it on because he read the script and it's like, This is what real Japanese folklore is, okay. And he, but he also takes it and he says, like, he makes Japanese like kind of breathe, like it's a like it's a place with real people that you know are eating, living, and breathing. It's not just the whole Godzilla, like he you know, that's he points cool. That out. So, real interesting story about. Half Irish. I'm half. I'm Mexican, Scottish, Japanese. So in a way, I was like, "Hey, Dub, that's pretty cool." Maybe that's why I love Japanese things so much. But a lot of people Maybe. do. Wayward is cool. And last but not least, le- the many deaths of Laidla Star. This is the new one I've seen around from Boom Comics. Yeah. And it is written by Ram V. I know he's done some. He took over some Swamp Thing titles, and illustrated by Felipe Andrada. Um, but the colors are very, very like robust, and um, it is Variety's best comic of 2021, and Entertainment Weekly's 10 best comics of 2021. Cool. Uh, humanity is on the verge of discovering immortality. As a result, the Avatar of Death is cast down to Earth to live a mortal life in Mumbai as a 20-something Layla star. So Death gets fired, and it's like the Indian version of Death, and she's just like at a company and like the guy. I was just like, yeah, we gotta let you go. And she's like, wait, what? Can't I've been doing this job for years? She's like, well, humans are about to become immortal, immortal so we so don't, we need, don't you need you anymore. anymore. <laughs> Crazy concept, right? But struggling with her newfound mortality, Layla has found a way t- has found a way to be dropped in the time and place where the creator of immortality will be born. Will Layla take her chance to stop mankind from permanently altering the cycle of life, or will death really become a thing of her past? So she's gonna go in time and kill this baby who's gonna become it. Who's gonna teach everyone how to be immortal? Whoa! <laughs> because I was just like in my brain, I was just like she got blown away by us and okay so humans are about to reach immortality yes. and then we're sending quote unquote <laughs> death, well, death who is mortal so they, they make her I mean, they, make, they make her mortal okay so everyone's I think mortal she tells but... like god's secretary kind of like has like a zeus vibe like it's an office vibe and there's like a little part where he's like hey i haven't finished it yet but she's like come on send me back as this girl who in the time frame whenever the the person who the creator of immortality will be born and so she wants to like, so the guy's like, are you really going to go kill a kid? And she's like, maybe I will. But it looks like an interesting read. But my thing is, is if I guess she just wants her job back, but, but you'd be immortal too. Cause you're mortal. So if immortality is given to maybe, Ooh, okay. That's, That's just, just a theory. So she's like, I'm not going to die. I, I haven't read I'm it. I'm not going to kill you, but make me immortal. So I can be like a God again. Yeah. But yes. Those are my picks. Uh, that I picked up from Coastal City Comics, Profits, that's classic. Lay the Stars, a new one. I think Wayward's in between those. This probably came out like in maybe probably 2018 or 17 or so. Okay. Um, but hell, you never know. These might get full pledged episodes in the future. We'll see. Maybe. Maybe so. Um, boom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> random laughter there. Random laughter. Um, okay. But yes, tell the people what you picked up um, at the, or the bookstore we went to. Yeah, so from the bookstore, I picked up... I'm also a whore for Ray Bradbury, if you didn't know that. Stop being whores and okay, I'm sorry. for artists. I am a respectful. big fan, a respectful lady. Fan. Lady fan of Ray Bradbury. Um, if I see anything new that I haven't read already, I buy it. Uh, so this is called The October Country. 
The October Country is Ray Bradbury's own netherworld of the soul, inhabited by the horrors and demons that lurk within all of us. And that's that on that. Ray Bradbury does go He God, I love this stuff that that he does. Is that a short story book or is it like... It's stories. Yeah. I love short stories as is, but Ray Bradbury just... Oh. He he slaps. He just... He really does. Illustrated Man. I've only read that and I've read, of course, Fahrenheit 451. Yeah. I've read... His writing skills are just top notch. Yeah. And then I also have the Tome Bay Convector. I've started that one. I just haven't finished it, but I will. Um, But there's an excerpt in here called The Grim Reaper. Sobbing wildly, he rose above the grain and hewed to left and right over and over and over. He sliced out huge scars in green wheat and ripe wheat with no selection and no care, cursing, swearing, the blade swinging up in the sun and falling with a singing whistle. Bomb shattered London, Moscow, and Tokyo. The kilns of Belson and Buckenwald took fire. The blade sang crimson wet. Mushrooms vomited out blind suns of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The grain wept in a green rain falling. Korea, Indochina, Egypt, India trembled, Asia stirred, Africa woke in the night, and the blade went on rising, crashing, severing, with the fury and the rage of a man who has lost and lost so much that he no longer cares what he does to the world. I'm scared. I know. (laughs) I got chills. Dude, (laughs) you know, that's my guy. He really be doing it. Ray Bradbury. Sci-fi guys. Oh, man. Okay, and then the next. I think so, too. Yeah. The next book I picked up is actually a pretty new book. Um, It's called Sundial. It's by Katrona Ward. I honestly, I heard someone give a synopsis of it. And then I saw the cover and I was like, oh, that's a pretty cover. I kind of want to buy it. And so this one, I'm like trying to see who. Oh, Thomas Old Havelt has given it. Old, yeah, old Heidevelt. Yeah, he the did, author um, of Hex. Hex. Oh my that god. That thing is so so that book was so good. I'm sure it's a really I think good. we talked about it on an episode before. Like I think it was our wrap up, maybe it was. Oh I, maybe. No, no, no. It was on, no, 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 it was on my yeah. channel and we she, talked so about Bruce it. So Bruising Books, her channel. We talked about Hex. Very it's scary story. Very like scary. A modern witch story. Like, yeah. It's awesome. I mean, and even Stephen King commented on this okay. one. So I'll have to read that too then. Yeah. I might get myself a copy. Let's see. You can't escape what's in your blood. All Rob wanted was a normal life. She almost got it too. A husband, two kids, a nice house in the suburbs. But Rob fears for her oldest daughter, Callie, who collects tiny bones and whispers to imaginary friends. Rob sees a darkness in Callie, one that reminds her too much of the family she left behind. She decides to take Callie back to her childhood home, to Sundial, deep in the Mojave Desert. And there, she will have to make a terrible choice. Oh, God. (laughs) Callie is worried about her mother. Rob has begun to look at her strangely and speaks of past secrets. Callie fears that only one of them will leave Sundial alive. The mother and daughter embark on a dark desert <laughs> journey to the past in the hopes of redeeming their future. Sharp as a snake bite. It sounds like a psychological thriller in a way. Like it's going to be a mom being like, I want to kill my child. Yeah. yeah. Because it's evil. It looks at me weird. <laughs> That sounds interesting. No, we we, and we usually run through horror stories if we're really, reading it really, really quickly because it just enthralls. It, you know, keeps us our pays our t- keeps our attention. Yeah, that was I'm. I got some creepy books. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. That was from the bookstore. Yeah, these two were from the bookstore. <laughs> from the unknown bookstore in Maine, I did get the Full Metal Alchemist. I was so excited about that one that I'm reading yeah. right now that I explained too early, but I picked up Slime. <laughs> what a I, nerd! <laughs> I saw a book titled slime um it's like how algae created us plagued us and just might save us it sounds so cool by ruth kessinger and i was like oh cool slime i love and i honestly in my head like i even made fun of myself i think also we're in maine it's illegal relax uh some nice little uh edibles so in a way we're a little toasty going around maine i was like (laughs) slime (laughs) it was uh pretty much i was just like oh crap so algae book i was like i'm a nerd and i like this mm-hmm. you're speaking my language yeah <laughs> um but it's new york times new and noteworthy title a science friday best book of summer and amazon's best science title of the year um no organism no organisms are more important to life as we know it than algae in slime ruth cassinger gives the un under underappreciated 
that's what we are. Underappreciated group, it's due. So the algae is being underappreciated and she's giving them their, their voice. Um, there are many algaes on earth as stars. There are many algaes in the earth as there are stars in the universe. There are as many algae in earth as there are stars in the universe. <laughs> And they have been essential to life on our planet for eons. Algae created the earth we know today with its oxygen rich atmosphere, abundant oceans, coral reefs, crude oils made of dead algae, and algae is our ancestor of all plants. Today. Wait, crude oil is made out of algae? There, yeah, it is. I dead guess algae? So. I guess so. I'm going to learn about it and well, I'll tell you yeah, all about it. Tell me all about it. Today's seaweed production is a multi billion dollar industry with algae hard at work to make your sushi, chocolate milk, beer paint toothpaste shampoo and so much more i love these books so much i i i, I like to do fiction and then then i like to take a break from like i do non-fiction then i'll take a break and do like a boring fiction book that just like informs you mean you, stuff. you read fiction and then you take a yes, break from fiction yes. to read non-fiction I read a lot of make-believe and not like just a made-up story if it's fantasy if it's whatever but then i gotta go to a non-fiction book just to like and thrive my mind with just some boring reality science get a little balance of plato philosophy and you know aristotle philosophy if you will interesting but slime about algae i'm a nerd it's <laughs> not so about nickelodeon that's for slime. sure um and of course to the the sequel to the book i read uh the first book i read in january dune messiah <laughs> we talked about it before i think in one of our earlier episodes, we talk about what we've been up to. I think we we're just catching up. And our up. de-stress and flex. De-stress and flex. Uh, we need to do another need one of those. Another segment. Um, if you have anything that you think, any comments of uh, what you're stressed about, maybe we can relate to you. So yeah. Leave, leave a comment um, on YouTube if you're watching there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Dune Messiah continues the story of Paul uh, Atreides, um, better known and feared as a man, Christian Mundep. And we watched the movie finally. Yeah. Um, I think we discussed it in the Stress and Flex as well. But I'm excited to read Dune. This one's pretty much, you know, self-explanatory, mm -hmm. crazy space, sci-fi. Yeah, crazy space. And I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. There you go. But okay. today is also... So today was free comic book day. So I think it's every May 7th yeah. is com free I think comic it's the book second, day. It's the first, first Saturday, Saturday of, of May. every mm -hmm. May every may each may whatever um so i got a couple of things and by a couple i just got two things i was i had to pee while i was in the store <laughs> what does that, that really, to do with it it really threw my whole <laughs> thing off i was like i'm gonna go in here and find some like we ended up getting free <laughs> comic books but we actually bought some too so the first thing and then Check i got the bathroom at austin city comics <laughs> it's actually austin, austin books, books and, and comics, comics. sorry <laughs> every it time is. it's always austin city austin books austin books and comics yeah uh, you'll find the nerd escape business card in there yeah uh, take a picture of it and you know put it in your story and be like tag us nerd underscore escape yeah yeah uh, <laughs> i came here for your bathroom <laughs> <laughs> thanks uh so i got uh i think it's called die dark um by q hash ha hayashida yeah. oh okay. and they because i don't know their gender and i do not want to mess it up um they did doro hidoro it's it's a manga, but it's also a anime series on Netflix. And I remember Jabbar had like mentioned it like in passing. Yeah. He's like, oh, we should watch that. And we both I are. looked at it and I was like, I don't want to watch that because I didn't think I would like the art style of it. And then one night, I think he was, oh, I think he was at his bachelor I was, yeah. party -ing. and um, <laughs> I like watch through all of that it was so good and i love the art style it was just i loved it and then when he got back i was like you're gonna sit down and watch all of yeah. this with me i didn't i was like i have to tell you about it because i think i was like texting him and i was like dude this anime is so good and he's like wasn't that the one i was trying to tell you about and i was like shut up <laughs> <laughs> i'm watching it <laughs> so it's really really good um this one though die dark Z cool. Zaha S Sanko's body has great and terrible powers. They say that possessing his bones will grant you any wish. 
even the desire to come to become ruler of the universe. But Sanko is still a teenage dude with his own life, and he isn't about to let every monstrous low life in the galaxy rip him limb from limb. That sounds cool. Oh, I'm not done. He and his skeletal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying so far. It oh, okay. Cool. He and his skeletal body. Uh, Avikian will use their dark powers to fend off any murder attempts while they search space for whoever put this curse on Sanko's bones because killing them might end the madness and then Sanko can celebrate with his favorite spaghetti don't wow. yeah okay yeah that's it yeah the it's because Doro Doro it has like it's like it's out there it's fucking out there it's out there it's like the mad guy like can grow mushrooms from like pretty much he can just grow mushrooms on you he makes like skyscraper sized yeah. mushrooms the main character has a lizard head <laughs> and he's trying to find the guy turn his head into a lizard and there's magic and other people have like this dark misty magic yeah uh, it's pretty violent like it, you know people throwing hammers around and hitting him in the head like square on yeah and it's, so it's like hitman assassin but yeah. also comedic so and good. i imagine I, you're talking about space and like people going after each other so i'm sure I'm assuming there's gonna be some limb ripping and yeah and, and it looks dark but it looks funny it looks oh yeah 100 so, like that looks like a good story i would be interested in reading that as well if i if he, if this person has anything else oh, yeah. and i mean we're looking for Dora they do, Dora, they do st- it was at abc the first one yeah I didn't know. I would have got it. I didn't know you wanted to pick it up. I would have picked it up. I would have got that. Sorry. So gotta go back. Uh, yeah. But you, I'm interested. Yeah, we're definitely. We've been reading a lot of mangas lately. 100. We, we have backups for many, many yeah, monuments for days. Picking things up. Yeah, which is fine. Also, if you have recommendations for spicy manga, please let me know. Yeah, because I don't need her <laughs> spicy manga. <laughs> Right on the line of hentai, just so you know, <laughs> that's her preference. Because we're going to bed sometimes. She's like, I can't find my book. I'm like, what book? My booby book. <laughs> her exact words. She's just like, my, I can't find my booby book. And I'm like, oh, God. You mean the one where the girl in the anime is just like, ah, and squeezing her boobs? Yes, that's the cover. <laughs> They're kind of spicy. but You haven't read it yet. You just looked at the pictures. That, man, why you got It's got a good that? plot. <laughs> I just didn't look at the pictures. I didn't see you reading anything. Okay, whatever. You know. <laughs> um, What's your next story? Moving on. <laughs> I'll take that anime to the bathroom. Disgusting. <laughs> Anyways, and the next one I picked up is Zero in Emergency, Volume 1. This one is by Elias Cott, and so we've also read another one of Elias Cott. The it was what? The New World. Yes. Yeah. New World. And guess what? Trad Moore is also in this one. Yeah. So this one I do believe is a set. It's like one story and it has a bunch of artists to draw different scenes. So very similar to what what was it, Profit? Uh yes, Profit. So I like that kind of stuff. It's really cool. So the synopsis for this one, Edward Zero was the best killer and the best spy the agency had. And then he realized he was working for the wrong side. This is the story of his journey beginning in 2018, ending 2038. This is a story of a world that changed. So I picked it up predominantly because of Elias Cott and then the many um, tried more, but tried also more. with um, a lot of the other artists because, yeah. again, I'm a big short story fan and anthologies. So, if a because I think so, short stories is made by one person most of the time, anthologies is where multiple people make up the story, I believe. So. Yeah, so I'm a I like both. Yeah, but and I don't think I've ever read one in comic book form, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how this really pans out. Okay, yeah, the and then once you said Trav Moore, I, I, I think Trav Moore is in one or two of the the the, the features in there because there's a bunch of them. Yeah, but yeah, I've I just she just opened the uh, Silver Surfer. Trad Moore and Donnie Cates. Yeah. And I, was and I, little, I just love it. She's just like the first scene. I'm like, I'm watching over. I'm like, yeah, that part's badass. She's just like, oh my God. Oh, ow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Trad Moore is so good. <laughs> he is amazing. Like, if you see any art with Trad Moore, you're probably going to have to have a lot of money to, to fork up because if it's at a bid or something, Trad Moore's art is amazing. I believe yeah. his wife was uh, Heather Moore. 
I don't even Yes, I think it was Heather. She's, she helps him with the art. Yeah, um, she does the coloring. And oh my God. It's, so it's good. Just, we're going to do a Silver Surfer. Uh, I think it's called, I forgot what it's called. It's like pretty much Silver Surfer meets the Venom, like, because it has a different name. It's like Darkest Night or something like that. I forgot. I don't know. But we'll review that one. But Trad Moore is the man. And oh, yeah, that looks like a fun one to read. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right, time to get to the wrap up here. Um, free beer, or not free, <laughs> free beer. Shout out free beer comedy. Um, <laughs> it was free. It was comic. To, yeah, it was free comic book day today, and I picked up a classic. I don't know if you ever heard of The Hunter. No, I haven't. Um, adapted and illustrated by Darwin Cook. It's Richard Stark's Parker. Um, I've read this. Is that book. Tony Stark's dad? No, it is not. <laughs> um. But it's just like this classic art, like it's it's like colored with like you know blue tint and just like and just has like you know white for the art. Um, but it's kind of a uh, I don't know, it's kind of a gangster movie in a way, like kind of like a it's kind of Ocean's Eleven, okay, but a comic book, okay. And but it's a little rougher than like people died. Like he's like this one, I believe he just gets screwed over by his friends and that you sucks. know like they try to kill him, leave him for dead, so he, he wakes up and gets vengeance. Um, there's another one called The Score, where there's this little town in the Canyon Valley, uh-huh. and um, it, it, they're very isolated from the rest of the world. So him and all his gangster like friends, pals, they go in there at night and like cut the power off, and they want to rob the whole city. Oh. Yeah, so it's like scores like that. And okay. then And the end of usually at the end of every book, he gets like facial reconstruction surgery, and he like disappears. Um, but yeah, uh, Hunt the Hunter is the story of a man who is hit, who hits New York's head like a shotgun blast of the chest betrayed by a woman he loved and double crossed by his partner in crime parker makes his way cross country with only one thought in mind to coldly exact to to coldly exact revenge and reclaim what was taken from him so this is a revenge book and um you know parker is the most iconic criminal ever created in my favorite by ed brum baker eisner and harver harvey award-winning writer and criminal and incognito so it's a kind of a crime book but mm-hmm. like it, it's like the main character is the main criminal and he's just like i don't know it has like what would you call that style right there it's just, i don't know i can't even uh it reminds me of calvin and Hobbes, like that kind of in style a way, of yeah. comic book drawing but it has like this old like i don't know 1960s I think it's or like 50s the 60s, yeah, yeah. set in the 60s yeah i think richard stark made it into a novel and so it's Richard Stark's novel, and the main character's name is Parker. Okay. Uh, Parker is dope. Uh, the Hunter. I'm really excited to reread this, and it should be a nice quick read. Maybe this will be in a future episode. And other than that, we did get free comic books. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. I actually never really go out for free comic book days. I know it's crowded. And I mean, in all honesty, like with the stuff that we talk about here, it was kind of like, oh, okay. It, it was good selection for like kids who don't read comic books, I'd say. And if you didn't start off. But yeah, I'm excited to read them. There was a few that I thought was cool because I think I picked up one. It was Bloodborne, and I, I, I think I, I can't remember if I like had started playing Bloodborne and I just couldn't get past like the first portion of the level, and I was like, Nah, this isn't for the me. Games are I can't beat those games either because I couldn't get past the wolves. They were just really intense. <laughs> I don't know if that's... I, I quit that that's... game too, don't worry. I quit that game too. <laughs> but I would, I'm would. i looking forward to kind of reading like this little first issue. So. All right. It's dope. I might start going to these things more often though. Well, that is an episode there. I don't know, know what to call it. It is the Bonanza. We got back from Maine and bought a bunch of cool stuff. We keep uh, buying books. Yeah. So it's just like we bought so <laughs> many things this like past, I don't know, two weeks we were just like, why don't we just? Have we had honeymoon we money. This? That's yeah, why we, we had honeymoon we money. So we were just like, let's. We did a lot of work. Yeah, we did. Totally did. So, we had that honeymoon money, and it was good. Um, but yes, thank you for tuning in. If you're listening on Spotify or any iTunes, please give us a rating. Um, follow us. You can follow us on IG at nerd underscore escape. We yeah. we do posts pictures of us if you want to see some of our faces mm-hmm. and if you want to see more some of our faces uh please watch us if you're not watching already on youtube yes um please like and subscribe you go to our ig and you could find a link there to our youtube page if yeah. you can't find it on a uh, search browser um but yes like and subscribe as cammy said mm-hmm. and thank you for watching listening and also on youtube we'll show some of the actual clips of things that we collected um but until next time this is Nerd Escape. The comic book podcast. Where we talk about everything underrated and overlooked. I'm your host, Kami. I'm your host, Jibler.
And we'll catch you in the next episode. Next life. That too. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Ask me about beer. Get toasted. We are toasted. <laughs>